it seems almost impossible to chart a business course, Ford Motor Company asserts its faith in the future by the introduction of a new car designed to meet the economic and transportation needs of the people. An eight-cylinder motor car at a price acceptable to every family is surely an epical step in automotive history. Mr. Ford, in his latest development, has given the public a value which should do much toward the restoration of business faith. This is not merely another automobile. The Model T set a standard in transportation. The Model A brought new efficiency and advance in engineering. And now, the V8, maintaining the pace set by previous models, is a new car throughout. In its every feature, the genius of Henry Ford is reflected. He has personally supervised its every detail. To him, as to the business world, it is a distinct mark of progress. Here it is, the new Ford V8. assembly line of the great Rouge plant of the Ford Motor Company at Dearborn, Michigan. Henry Ford and officials of the company are here to see the first new car being built. Mr. Ford inspects the engine in the chassis. And now, down goes the hammer, and he has stamped number one on the first production V8 engine. down the line. The body is lowered on the chassis. Henry and Edsel Ford inspect the first completed car. Let's leave them here while we inspect the new engine. Here it is. You who are mechanically inclined cannot but admire this trim, compact power plant. This V-type, eight-cylinder, 90-degree engine delivers its power in a smooth, constant flow, free from vibration. It develops 65 brake horsepower at 3,400 revolutions per minute. Now for a little closer inspection of the engine. The cylinder blocks and crankcase are cast in one piece. This produces extremely rigid engine construction, ensures perfect alignment of cylinders, and eliminates many parts common to V-type engines, which are made of two cylinder blocks. Let's examine the crankshaft. Due to the compactness of the engine, it is short and rigid. It weighs 65 pounds. The crank pins are arranged at 90 degree angles and are counterweighted for smooth operation. The counterbalances are integral with the shaft itself, rather than being attached by bolts in the conventional manner. The shaft also is statically and dynamically balanced. Assembled in the engine with connecting rods and pistons, it is in perfect balance. It operates with velvety smoothness at all engine speeds. Bearings are machined to precision limits and are lapped, honed, and polished to a mirror-like finish. Thus, friction is reduced to a minimum, ensuring long wear and smooth operation. Here's the crankshaft in the block. The cylinder bore is offset 3 sixteenths of an inch from the center line of the crankshaft, which increases the smoothness of the motor by reducing the angularity of the connecting rod on the power stroke. This is an interesting feature. A circular tongue on each end of the main bearing caps fits into a groove in the cylinder block with a limit of clearance of one thousandth of an inch between the tongue and groove. 
strain on main bearing bolts is eliminated as the tongue and groove absorb all the side thrust. This is a new practice in automobile engines. The connecting rods are the straight type, all the same size. They are heat treated forgings and designed to provide lightness and strength. Here are the piston pins. They are made of seamless steel tubing and are of the full floating type. The piston pin fits into a bronze bushing in the connecting rod. This bushing is an inch in diameter and is diamond bored to ensure the utmost accuracy and size. The pistons are special heat treated aluminum alloy. They combine lightness of weight with excellent heat conducting qualities, both desirable features. Each piston has three rings. The two upper ones act as gas seals and the lower one is slotted for oil control. Pistons, piston pins, and connecting rods are assembled in sets. A variance in weight of only about one ninth of an ounce is permitted. Here is another new feature of the Ford V8 engine. A floating bushing is used between the connecting rod and crank pin instead of the conventional Babbitt bushing in the connecting rod. This bushing is of steel with Babbitt on both sides and covers the full length of the crank pin bearing. It forms a double area of bearing surface for each connecting rod with a double film of oil, ensuring long wear. Here's how the connecting rods are assembled on the crankshaft. Rods from opposite cylinders are placed side by side on the same crank pin. A clearance of 10 to 12 thousandths of an inch is provided to allow for side play of the rods and to eliminate friction. The timing gear which is pressed on the camshaft is of bakelized fabric, ensuring quiet operation. Here we have the camshaft. It is made of a special heat treated forging and has three bearings. It is machined to the utmost precision limits and contour of the cams are designed to provide quiet operation of valves at all speeds. The valves are non-adjustable and have a mushroom end. They are made of chromium and nickel alloy and being light in weight operate quietly. The push rod is hollow and is also light in weight. A split valve guide is used. Here's how the valve looks with valve guide, spring, and retaining washer. These cylinder heads are designed for mounting individual water pumps at the front end. Combustion chambers are machined to give a compression ratio of five and one half to one. The valve chamber in the V of the engine has but one cover. This cover is made of aluminum and the intake manifold is cast integral with it. The fuel pump mounted on the valve chamber cover is operated by a reciprocating plunger which is actuated by an eccentric on the camshaft. The pump is the diaphragm type and has a sediment trap built into it. The carburetor is the downdraft type, specially developed for the Ford V8 engine with mechanical pump and power jet. It is equipped with a silencer. Another unique feature of the new Ford V8 engine is the intake manifold, which is built integral with the valve chamber cover. It is designed with an individual port to each cylinder. Ports are machined in both manifold and cylinder block to ensure a smooth flow of fuel to the combustion chamber. Through these openings, hot gases surge back and forth from one side to another, forming a hot spot in the intake manifold. The oil filler and breather pipe is conveniently located on top of the valve chamber cover. Baffles in the pipe eliminate the possibility of oil blowing out of the engine. 
The oil pump is a positive displacement gear tank. It is located in the bottom of the oil pan and operated by an idler gear run off the camshaft. It provides pressure lubrication to all camshaft main bearings and crankshaft main and connecting rod bearings. The crankcase oil capacity is five quarts. The generator, as you see, is mounted on top of the engine at the front of the valve chamber cover, the fan pulley revolving on the generator shaft. By loosening this screw, the generator may be raised or lowered to adjust the fan belt. The distributor, coil, and condenser are combined in one unit at the front of the engine. The distributor rotor operates directly on the end of the camshaft with no interposing gears, so there is perfect timing all the time. Here we have the distributor cut away so you can see the mechanism. Full automatic spark control is provided by the action of the centrifugal governor. But a new feature is the vacuum controlled brake on the governor, which controls its action and ensures perfect timing even when the engine is suddenly accelerated under heavy load. Spark plugs are connected with the distributor by heavy insulated cables, which are carried in waterproof conduits from each cylinder bank. The distributor also is waterproof. Airplane propeller type fan and a centrifugal water pump in each cylinder head are features of the efficient cooling system. The clutch is the single plate type. These springs are provided in the web of the clutch plate to absorb sudden shocks. You will be interested in the way the engine is mounted in the chassis. It is completely cushioned on rubber. It is mounted on rubber at two points in front and it is attached to a rubber insulated plate in the center cross member. An easily accessible cup provides lubrication for the clutch throwout bearing. Gear shifting is easy. The transmission has a silent second, helical cut gears in constant mesh. And the synchronizing device permits quiet shifting between first and second gears up or down with no possibility of clashing gears. And now that we have finished our inspection of the engine, let us examine the frame. It is of the double drop type, which brings the car close to the road, giving a lower center of gravity, a safety feature. Built with deep side members and five cross members, it is unusually strong and rigid. The rear axle is a three-quarter floating type the advantage of which is that the weight of the car is carried on the axle housing. Axle gears are forged integral with the shafts. Roller bearings are used throughout as the most efficient. The double taper roller bearings on the pinion shaft assuring perfect alignment of gears. The drive shaft is the tubular type. The Ford principle of torque tube and radius rod construction is retained in this new car. The sturdily constructed front radius rods run from the front axle to the center cross member where they are joined. They are attached in a rubber insulated ball socket. By the use of the rubber insulator here in the socket, a new element of quietness is introduced. Metal to metal contact is eliminated and lubrication is unnecessary. Equal sturdiness is found in the rear radius rods, which are attached to special brackets on the rear axle housing, running forward to join the torque tube. Through the use of the torque tube, driving thrust is taken up by the tube, leaving the springs free to perform their normal function. 
The radius rods maintain axles in correct alignment and so ensure maximum efficiency in brake operation. Here again in the new car is another basic Ford principle, the transverse cantilever spring. In this car, we find the rear spring mounted back of the rear axle housing, a low, flat spring with full flexibility. Rear springs are made in several sizes to meet the riding requirements of the various body types. The shock absorbers, when installed on the car, are set to provide the proper cushioning effect from normal driving conditions on a smooth road. After that, they automatically adjust themselves to all roads. A bimetallic thermostat automatically opens and closes the fluid passage as temperature changes, while the valve it regulates operates automatically when bad bumps are encountered. Thus, a smooth, comfortable ride is assured over all kinds of roads, winter or summer. Here's how the shock absorbers perform. This machine was built to test them out, and the wheels are jolting more violently than they would on any road over which the average driver travels. Yet you have only to look at the glass of water to see how the shocks have been absorbed and how steadily the frame rides. Another outstanding feature of the new Ford V8 is the extensive use of rubber insulators. They are used in all spring shackles and in all the shock absorber links. They, with the rubber in the front radius rod ball socket, insulate the running gear from the frame, which means quiet operation. They eliminate all metallic wear and tests indicate that they will last the life of the car. Brakes are of the four wheel mechanical type. The service brake has a braking surface of 186 square inches. The brake drums are of a special cast alloy iron and tests show that they will not easily score. The brake cross shaft is a nine inch shaft mounted in oilless bearings at the rear of the center cross member, so designed as to ensure positive action. The brakes are simply constructed, are self-centering, and designed to bring the car to a stop quietly, quickly, and smoothly with the least effort. Here on this board are shown the various ball and roller bearings used in the new car. Each bearing is selected for the particular function it has to perform. The car moves in these frictionless bearings in all forward speeds, another assurance of good performance and long life. Steering has been made almost effortless with the new worm and sector steering gear with three tooth sector. Another feature is that the thrust bearings are automatically adjusted. Here we have the fuel tank. It is made of turn plate electrically seam welded into one piece and is unusually strong. It has a capacity of 14 gallons. The pump and gauge tubes running forward are electrically welded together for strength. Now we come to the bodies of the new car. They are of steel built to the high qualities of workmanship characteristic to all Ford manufacturers. An interesting feature of the fine mesh wire used in the soft roof construction of the sedan bodies is that it is completely insulated and so may be used as a radio aerial. This panel shows various coats applied in painting the bodies. A primer, two surfacer coats, three double header coats of peroxylin lacquer, and a finished coat of lacquer. There is a choice of several beautiful color combinations. Fenders are beautifully finished in enamel. Underneath it, quality you do not see, 
is a coat of Bondurite, which helps preserve the enamel and prevents rust spreading if the fenders are scratched. Running boards are long and wide. They are made of steel, and the rubber covering is vulcanized to the metal. Another feature of the running board is that it is attached directly to the side member of the chassis frame. Steel spoke wheels are used on the new car. Here's how the spokes are electrically welded to the rim, making one piece construction. There are 32 spokes in the wheel. The large hub cap is of rustless steel. All wheel retaining nuts are concealed inside the wheel hub, yet are easily accessible when a wheel change is necessary. The drop center rim is designed for the large tire. Tires on the new car are large, 525 by 18, and add measurably to riding comfort. The valve stem comes through the wheel rim at an angle, and is easily accessible. On this board are grouped the rusty steel parts used on the V8. Always bright, for they never rust or tarnish, they add to the beauty of the car. There's an inviting beauty to the interior of the deluxe cars. Bodies of all the cars are roomy, Seats are deeply cushioned and restful. Appointments are attractively designed, and upholstery is rich. The Turkish-style piping enhances the restfulness of the seats. The front single seats fold flat and permit easy access to the rear compartment of the car. Driving comfort is assured by the easily adjustable driver's seat. It has a four-inch range of movement. The angle of the windshield reduces headlight glare, and windshield pillars are narrow to aid visibility. There are two inside sun visors, and being mounted on double-jointed brackets may be easily adjusted to the desired position. The mechanism of the vacuum windshield wiper is concealed. Instruments are conveniently grouped on the attractively designed oval instrument panel. The panel is indirectly illuminated. The steering wheel is of three-spoke design permitting easier visibility of the instrument panel. The throttle control button is on the instrument panel. The coincidental steering and ignition lock is built integral with the steering column bracket. The ignition must be turned off before the key can be removed. When the key is removed, it releases a plunger which locks the steering shaft. The car may be locked with the wheels in any position, but if they are then turned into a straight position, the plunger immediately locks them in that position. There is beauty in every detail of the car. The streamline effect is carried out throughout, from the radiator back along the hood and cowl, up and over the windshield, and along the roof lines, and down the rear panel. Let us enjoy the beauty of the details for a moment. The front has an impressive distinctiveness, a richness of design. The single bar chromium plated bumpers have been designed for good appearance and stability. A double corrugation provides strength and the design is such as to minimize possibility of locking bumpers with another car when parking. Front license plate brackets are on the front tubular cross member of the frame. The license plate is easily visible, but it neither mars the beauty of the front 
nor does it interfere with the airflow to the radiator. Headlamps have been designed to harmonize pleasingly with the lines of the car. To ensure permanent brightness, the headlamp shells are of rustless steel. There is further attractiveness in the outward curving lenses. Cowl lamps give a touch of smartness to the deluxe cars. Individuality of the new Ford car is expressed in the beautifully designed V radiator shell, which is finished in the same color as the car. Its appearance is further enhanced by the grille, which is finished in a French gray color and set off by a rustless steel molding. The top hood hinge is entirely concealed by a rustless steel molding, a bright strip which gives the car a spirit of dash and speed. There is good appearance in the windshield, which is set at a 10 degree angle in a frame with concealed hinges. And here's an outstanding feature. All the new deluxe cars have safety glass throughout as standard equipment. Windshields in the other cars are of safety glass, but these cars can be fully equipped with it at a small additional cost. Window openings are designed to provide full vision, yet they blend pleasingly with the lines of the car and the gracefully curved back reflects a spirit of fleetness, a final emphasis to the beauty of the car itself. But beauty is not everything in a car. It must have stability, power, speed, and it must be safe. Here you see the new Ford V8 cars under test on the track of the Rouge plant in Dearborn. Watch them come. Watch them go. Thrilling, isn't it? More punishment, perhaps, than they will ever receive in the hands of an owner. Yet, on they go. Now we introduce a few of the body types. First, the two-door sedan. Now the deluxe two-door sedan. Here is the four-door sedan. And this, the deluxe four-door sedan. All wonderful clothed cars for the family. The Victoria, another beautiful car. Now for the young folk, the Roadster. Look at this, the Deluxe Roadster. Another open type, the Phaeton. Here's the Deluxe Phaeton with curtains up with curtains off. For the man who wants an individual car, the coupe. Or the sport coupe.
This is the new Ford station wagon, a handsome unit of unusual utility which stands unique in its field. It accommodates eight persons, including driver, or by removing the rear seats, it can be used for delivery or for hauling a large amount of luggage or equipment. It is ideal for hotels, country clubs, large estates, surveying crews, transporting labor, for camping trips, and many other purposes. Three persons are comfortably accommodated in the front seat. Three in the rear. And one in each of the two bucket seats. The side curtains rest in brass channels on the roof when not in use. They may be quickly pulled down. Rear curtains can be snapped on very quickly. The tailgate is supported by leather-covered chains and when lowered provides a sturdy luggage deck. The rear seats may be easily removed to provide additional loading space and still leave accommodation for five persons. Almost any need for an enclosed delivery type can be met with one of the new Ford panel bodies. There is a standard body for each of three wheelbases and a deluxe model on the commercial car and 131 and one-half inch truck chests. This is the panel delivery on the commercial car chassis. It has an all-steel body furnished like other commercial cars and trucks in any standard color with satin finish. Large doors in all panel bodies make it easy for the driver to get in and out. Unusual driver comfort is secured. Greater riding ease is obtained in this delivery unit through the new rear spring and double-acting shock absorber. This assures protection for a fragile load. Notice the wide rear door opening and how the body has been lowered to make loading easy. It has unusually generous load space with narrow rounded wheel houses. Hardwood slats at the sides protect the load. Here is the deluxe panel body on the commercial car chassis. Structurally, it is identical to the standard body, but there are many refinements in trim. The body is polished and may be obtained in a wide variety of color combinations. Headlamps, cowl lamps, and many other parts are rustless steel. The interior is finished with a heavy, wear-resisting material. In all details, it is truly a deluxe delivery car for the most exclusive shop, well fitted to the requirements. KSO driver, good luck. Here we go. Time, 7 a.m. 50 miles an hour, day and night. The grueling grind that proves Ford V8 economy in gas and oil. In for refueling, lubrication, recording in logbook, and change of drivers. Gas and oil supply under lock and key throughout the entire economy run. Phillips 66 gasoline and Phillips 66 motor oil used exclusively. Entries in log book made under supervision of a KSO representative. 10,000 miles in 10 days. More miles than the average driver covers in a whole year. The golden Ford V8 completes spectacular test and drivers are congratulated as final results are broadcast by KSO. Total mileage, 10,068. 19 and 6 tenths miles per gallon. No oil added between 1,000 mile changes. A wonderful record by a wonderful car.